Hey guys, welcome back inside the stash. So we're doing one of our uh, patented, but not copyrighted, uh, what do we got into the box videos uh, in the sense of uh, recent acquisitions. We've had some things come in from overseas, both from SK decals and um, my back to work at last uh, shipment from Hobby Link Japan. So some uh, decals to go over, some kits to go over. So good times there. All right, so first up, I was at Walmart the other day doing what I like to call my married bachelor shopping runs, which is where you buy a bunch of disassociated products and then go to a cashier who looks at you funny. In this case, it was a package of paintbrushes, a box of cat litter, a half a gallon of milk, and uh, some hot dog buns, because that none of that goes together at all. Uh <laughs> Be that as it may, I I was I went through the craft section at Walmart. I'm not you know me. I'm not a big crafty person. I mean, if you get that to work for you, that's fantastic on your part. But uh, I'm not a big crafty person. But Walmart here does carry Exacto blades, and I needed more Exacto knife blades. Um, I'm sure I could go on Amazon or like a thousand of them for ten dollars, something like that. But I, it's, I'm, I'm at Walmart. I needed Exacto blades. I'm gonna buy some Exacto blades. It's just like buying the buying this this some the uh, gel control super glue. It's at Walmart. I could probably buy it off of Amazon, but I'm already at Walmart, so I'm just gonna get it there. I went through there, you know, a couple days ago, and I saw this set of paint brushes. This tackling stuff is like fake brush. It's not real brush. So they're probably not as good a quality uh, as a Winsor Newton or anything like that. However, for basically two dollars and eighty-five cents for uh, I don't know how many was this ten paintbrushes, <coughs> I thought it was worth the quote-unquote investment in the paintbrushes, right? So this has uh, a couple of ten aught, uh, three ten aught brushes, which is a ten over zero, which are the these little tiny off camera, little tiny, tiny ones, and then you have a couple of aught, uh, on a one, a couple of ones, a couple of uh, ones, a couple of ones, a two, a three, a four, and a five, depending on what they are, uh, obviously you've got a couple of, of, like, flat liner brushes in here, some round ones, some drop them on the floor ones, and some, uh, just spotter brushes and things like that. I basically bought these because I need, I, I have found as, you know, I work more and more in sort of fine detail work on my models, I have not enough small paintbrushes. So, for three bucks, uh, you know, they're not a, a $17 paintbrush, like the one Windsor Newton, uh, you know, ten, I think it's a 20 over aught that I have. You know, it, it, I, if they work out and they're decent paintbrushes, I'll, 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 you know, let you guys know. I'll update you on these as I use them. Uh, you know, I'm not a big proponent of fake paintbrushes in the sense of being, you know, the vinyl kind or, you know, polyurethane, polyethylene. I forget what the heck this stuff is made out of technically. I looked it up on Wikipedia or something like that the other day and I can't remember it anymore, but it's, you know, they're obviously synthetic brushes. <laughs> to do the peg leg peat thing for Family Guy, uh, that's the point. That's the uh, point of the story, what we're, what we're aiming for there, the, uh, the general gist of what I'm saying. Uh, so, you know, what the heck? Is that's my that's my take on this is what the heck because if they suck I spent three dollars if they don't suck well then it was a really good investment for three dollars I just I need more this you know more of these smaller size paintbrushes than I have uh, like when I was detailing the uh, the dash not the dashboard but the, the steering wheel of the Z4 I had to do that over the course of several days because I was you know, painting multiple colors of teeny tiny little dots of paint. And, you know, by the time you paint the paint, wash, you know, clean the brush, let the brush dry back out again, and then, you know, you're doing like, and with a work schedule of actually, you know, having to be someplace occasionally, uh, it turned into a multi-day affair. So next up, let's go into the SK decal stuff. Uh, the rustling around you here is me trying to fish a resin uh, dashboard out of a box. Um, I've ordered a number of sets of decals. Derp. Of course I did. Uh, and uh, what I have gotten in terms of some of the a, uh, the uh, decals are some Gear Race of Macau Ford Sierra decals. Uh, that would be the old Group A race car uh, based, you know, the Ford Sierra kit that Tommy had did many years ago. Uh, something that sorely needs a reissue of, but that's just my opinion. Uh, the Gear Race of Macau cars are were raced by British drivers using you know, after season, basically, British touring car spec Ford Sierras, which are right-hand drive. Uh, 
obviously, or, or dare I say. So what uh, SK, what Frankie has done is, is create uh, right-hand drive dashboards for these decals. So this would be, whoops, ah, see I was trying to sneak into the camera range so that it would be in focus and I end up dropping it. So this is the dashboard. Um, other than maybe this little, this is a little, little sketchy over here as far as the engraving goes. I think this is a really nice resin piece. More than likely, you'll never even notice this. Obviously, you could rescribe it and straighten that out a little bit. But overall, the quality of it is pretty good. Uh, has all of the, has a let's say much better engraving uh, depth and you know the buttons stick out and everything. Much better engraving depth than a lot of products that are out there. These dashboards come with, now the decals are a little more expensive than other decals in the line, but these, these dashboards come with the decals. They're not a separate piece. I'm sure that if you needed a left hand, a right-hand drive dashboard and you talk to Frankie, he might be willing to sell you one separately, but in order to get, these are race spec, obviously. They've had the radios and the climate controls deleted off. Um, these come, like I said, with the decal sets. So that's a pretty cool feature. Um, a lot of the aftermarket suppliers out there that sell decals, uh, you know, Studio 27, Shunko, when they were doing JT or doing Super GT stuff, would just sell decals regardless of whether or not the actual decals, you know, matched anything, right? There's a whole line, and you've seen it, I bought a bunch of them, uh, the whole line of Super GT decals that were done for like 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, uh, year wise. <clears throat> That in reality, if you were to make models of them and you cared, you couldn't use the base kits without modifying them. In some cases, very extensively. Uh, and you know, the decals are just like, "Hey, use this kit," and then you could, if you use that kit, and people knew what you were doing in the sense of they recognized the car. Yeah, they'd be like, "Why? Why is this a 2007 spec Lexus on a 2011 set of decal?" So I, I appreciate Frankie for going ahead and uh, you know getting things taken care of in that sense, making the corrections and selling them, so that uh, you know you don't have left-hand drive British touring car stuff. Um, he's done, I believe, seven sets of Sierra decals at this point. It might be five. I'd have to go count, but I bought three of them. Uh, the first one is this set here, which represents the 1988 European touring car uh, Eggenberger Motorsports Texaco livery. People who are familiar with these kits themselves will recognize this as being the livery that's in the Tamiya kit itself. The problem with the livery that's in the Tamiya kit is, at this point, it's um, almost, well, I know it is, it's 30 years old. And those decals, for the most part, are shot uh, in everybody's model kit. These, you know, placards for the ones are not white anymore. This windshield placard's not white anymore. And these decals have more than likely faded into sort of a hot pink. Uh, Shunko makes a replacement set for them, but their decals are hot pink right off the decal sheet. Um, there's also another company that makes replacement decals. It might be Decal Pool or it's MSM Creations, one of the other uh, older uh, legacy, if you will, uh, Hong Kong decal manufacturers. But theirs are hot pink as well. These are, well, they're red. So, <laughs> you know, Texaco red is a thing. It's, it's you know, the, the star behind the Texaco symbol. So this, uh, yeah, this car has this this set of decals has the Texaco uh, legitimate, you know, red decals. So that's why we bought this because you know I, I want to do one of the kits basically effectively box stock as the Texaco car, and uh, my decals are shot obviously, and uh, yeah, I don't want hot pink logos. So yay to Frankie for color registering these correctly. <laughs> it's a uh, doesn't seem like it would be that hard of a, an issue, but yet there it is. So this does not come with a set of de this does not come with a dashboard set because this is a, a left-hand drive car. It was a European touring car, not a British touring car. So uh, you don't get a resin dashboard with this set, and the price is accordingly somewhat lower. Uh, on the sets the, of decals that do come with a right-hand drive dashboard, you get this set here which is the 1989 Gia Race of Macau. So this, again, 89 is kind of the end of the of the, uh, the dominance of the Ford Sierras in Group A. <clears throat> and, uh, excuse me, because, you know, we're starting to go into the BMW M3 uh, era as far as their dominance uh, in, in Group A, as well as the fact that 
you know, touring cars are going to become sedans shortly after this. Touring Group A is going to sort of split up into two doors and four doors. And the touring European touring cars and British touring cars and, you know, JTCC and things like that are going to go into the four-door spec. And you're going to see that, you know, the two-door things like the Nissan GTR are going to go over into, like, what will become Super GT and things like that. Anyway, race history aside, this is, of course, the uh, another Watson's liveried car. Um, somebody, I don't know who, be it Gravity, be it Zero, be it, be it Splash, be it somebody needs to make this fluorescent green color because I have several things I need to paint that color and I can't find something. I mean, I could mix paint. It's kind of close by uh, part green on certain sets of decals, but if you have a real... You know, honest to God, set of these, they're not going to match because these, this green, which is, there's very little of it on here, but there is some of it on here, is a very different shade of green than the Tommy Park green is. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the solution to this would be because you almost have to make the, the color match these decals rather than the other way around, but be that as it may. Um, yeah, so this is, was one of two cars that ran in 1989. They finished first and second. I believe this was the second place car. So you do get a resin dashboard with that set. Then you have the uh, other car, the Hutchinson's Telecommunications car, a nice British telecom in Hong Kong. This is, of course, 1989, so this is way before uh, you know Hong Kong is handed back to the Chinese government. Um, I have to do a little research into the proper shade of blue that this uh, uh, is, but you have a couple of basically little swooshes here and there, and then you got to paint the two-tone. Right. So you have the, the blue swooshes here, which are these uh, ones from oops, behind the, the or I should say, in front of the front wheel. And then you have this sort of silver stripe here, and the rest of this you're going to have to paint on your own. Uh, I like the old school digital clock numbering. <laughs> I just like the way that looks. And then, uh, you know, I, like I said, I want to say this was the winning car. Uh, also, moving on to other things, there's this little, this little guy here, this little sheet of decals, which is the conversion to take the uh, Hobby Nunu Rao Racing car and turn it into the 2016 Fiat GT World Cup uh, car. So, literally, number placards, two little associate sponsorship changes, the uh, you know the the windshield header, and then your name, your your Nikki Katzberg name uh, placards over here. So. Just a little sheet. I think it's cost like $8 or something like that. Uh, but if you want to, again, change the car over all the rest of the decals or the decals that come in the kit. So just a little sheet for that. And then you have the other set of decals for cars that were raced at that race that we actually can build models of uh, in the sense of having a base kit. And this is the obviously the AMG uh, version, the Driving Academy. Uh, you can build two different cars from this. The uh, uh, Zande uh, car as well as the uh, Engel car. Now the Engel car is what won the race, and then I want to say Zandy finished like seventh or eighth or something like that. But you see here, you get uh, a pretty good, you know, set of decals here. Obviously, you need a ma you need a green hell mango. Uh, we have our gravity colors version. There's also uh, a zero color, and I think Splash is doing a set as well. Um, but uh, you get two different gross rounds for each car. Uh, I want to say Angle's car used the black one and the other one used the white one. And then all of these decals were basically patterned after the uh, decals that come in the actual Tamiya kit as far as uh, designing them. So they should fit uh, as good as the kit decals do in terms of these stripes lining up with the slam lock on the hood. Uh, and, you know, this being a separate piece, you're not having to cut this at the hood line and things like that. So it's a nice touch there. And, uh, yeah, like I said, cool set of decals uh, for your Macau project. Uh, we picked up two sets of these because this bu technically builds uh, two different cars. Uh, and that is the first real legitimate aftermarket set for the Volvo, uh, B-Max Volvo. I know that uh, Dekelkos, I think, is also threatening to do a sheet of this. But theirs isn't out yet, as far as I know. It may have come out, I'm not sure. Uh, once Frankie said he was doing a set of these, I just waited for his. But this builds the uh, 1986 European Touring Car Championship car, uh, the famous Nordica livery that a lot of people like to talk about. Uh, you know, it's the 1980s, so it's a lot of this is really you know kind of basic as far as the design goes. Also, as an option to this, you can build the 1986 
uh, Australian Touring Car Championship winning car. Uh, so obviously this loses the the uh, Nordica livery and replaces it with a Volvo Volvo uh, dealer team livery and bigger numbers. Basically, this bottom you know set of decals down here are the Australian Touring Car, and then the Nordica stuff here is in the middle, and then you have the Universal use stripes and, and tow hook arrows and things like that up here. So that's a pretty cool uh, little thing there. Um, there's also I want to say. Um, there's other, also another option here, really, because there's uh, tourist trophy uh, things on here that are not <laughs> shown on the uh, actual decal sheet as far as being placed. So a little research into that. There might be a, a third race here, or maybe there's a, uh, you need to, uh, they go on to a different car. I have to do a little research on that, but that's cool. Didn't even notice when I filmed this video the first time, didn't even notice that. So two sets of those. Again, because we want to do one of each. And then the last set is uh, one of the sets we also showed you in the last update video of the bench stuff. Um, it's an upcoming project, and that is the Charles Kwan uh, liveried 1993 Gia Macau uh, M3. This is a very significant car in the local lore of the race because uh, the M3 was not being used in Group A racing anymore. This is actually a DTM spec car. And the touring spec cars were now the 318 uh, they were sedans, and so for a local driver in what was considered a sub-par, uh, underfunded team to win the race, uh, a lot of it had to do with the fact that this car and its team car were on the pole and in second position, and he basically led the whole race, but the 318s being a superior car and, you know, more powerful and everything else like that, they never did quite catch him. And uh, this has just some great 19, uh, you know, early, late 80s, early 90s uh, references as far as, you know, video magic laser disc specialists and these old Pro AC loudspeaker uh, and audio quest delivery. It's just a very cool period piece um, that, you know, is, uh, I'm just tickled by the dating of it. There are certain uh, liveries on certain things where the livery really dates the car to a certain period. Another great example of this would be the uh, First National Bank uh, Traveler's Check liveries that a couple of different Porsches use. Um, those really, you know, date the, the vehicle as well. You get this set of, uh, with this comes this. This is the photo etch set. Um, this is just a, sort of a generic photo etch set that he sends out with all of the M3 decals. Um, Basically, you got some brake rotor faces, the mirror faces for both the cup mirrors and the Evo mirrors, uh, tow hooks, wipers, and a bunch of uh, the, uh, you know, both open and closed uh, cotter pin. There's a specific name for those hood latches that I'm forgetting, but they're cotter pin latches. And then also included in this, and these are new for this, this set of decals, are these resin uh, E36 mirrors. Basically, these are the mirrors off of a th off of the 1993, or I should say the 1994, 1993, 1994 M3, the new version, the car that would be you know the E36. Uh, they use those mirrors on this car. Um, so again, I've another great thing. You're replacing, getting accurate replacement mirrors with this set of decals uh, for like a couple of bucks, basically. Uh, and your car will not look like you don't know what you're doing in the sense of not realizing that you needed a different set of mirrors for this car. So this will be one of the new, one of the uh, upcoming projects uh, as soon as the Z4 gets finished. So there's uh, that, the, the stash of things from SK. And we'll go into the HLJ box over here. Uh, first up, we got another one of these great clear folders that Hobby Link Japan likes to send out during sale times. They just had a spring sale uh, last week or something like that. I didn't realize that clear folders were something that were being given out with the order within shipping it within a certain time, but this is certainly a very uh, florally spring feel, uh, you know, a clear folder. You take your, um, I have some, a couple of these are smaller. This is obviously you put documents in. Um, I have a couple, like I said, a couple of smaller ones that are about yay big, or I should do it this way so you can see the size, about the, this yay big, and I take my decal sheets that I'm using on current projects, and I stick them in those so that they don't uh, get lost or somehow get damp. When you have several cats and a dog, things can get damp mysteriously, along with small children, things get really damp mysteriously. Uh, so this is a cool little touch. I know a lot of people don't care about these, uh, or they just 
would rather not get them in the first place. I have now a, a rather substantial collection of Hobby Link Japan uh, fat Scott hard cartoon head uh, bric-a-brac, so <laughs> I don't know. I think it's cool. They don't have to do that. So, you know, I, I mean, granted, it probably cost them like a nickel a folder, but still, something they don't have to do, so I appreciate it. Um, and next up we have, this will kind of lead you into the, the kits that we got, right? So here's the Toyota Corona uh, detail upset. Some photo etch in here, some seatbelt material, and then in the little plastic baggie here is the air connect for the air jack. Um, this is one of these decal sets that'll, that gets into the, do I really, or decal sets, photo etch sets that really gets into the, did I need to buy this photo etch set? Because several of these uh, things, namely this great big piece here that's underneath the, the uh, the seatbelt material that makes it that basically covers a box that's in the interior. <sighs> yeah, do you need it? Probably not, but it, it certainly up be one of those things of like uh, for the brake faces, the the radiator behind, surrounds, and you know a couple other little things that are on here. Yeah, okay, it's worth the you know couple of bucks that this costs. So uh, there's three sets of this. I have three of the kits, so we'll get to that when we get to the kits as far as what they're going to be uh, used for. And then we have the rest of the little stuff here. Uh, fish, uh, I'm doing the video. Everything's mixed up now. Uh, we picked this up because it was on sale. I don't have a set for the car that I have. Uh, the kit I have, I should say. So this is the factory uh, photo etch for the uh, Tamiya Nissan GTR kit. Um, just basically some brake faces, um, paddle shifters, uh, pedal uh, pedals themselves, and then some vents and things like that. It was, uh, this is like a, what, $11 photo etch set to begin with, and it was on sale for $5. So for five bucks, oh, you also get a set of uh, exhaust tips as well, some turn metal exhaust tips. So for five bucks, why not? Um, <clears throat> two other detail upsets that we've picked up. These are for those Le Mans C9 cars that we've been talking about recently. Uh, this is the Sauber C9. They just reissued this set, so if you couldn't find it recently, it just got reissued. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on here, <laughs> including like a photo etch fan belt <laughs> faces. That's some really wild uh, detail right there. Um, you know, plug wires as well. So it should be interesting to see how some of that works out. Uh, I bought it mostly for brake faces and, and you know, bulkhead walls and, and things of that nature. Uh, just to make the detail pop a little more within it. Um, you get a little gist of what, what's going on here with the uh, instructions as far as, you know, making the kill switch and making the headlight buckets. The wipers, photo etch wipers are always dicey, but you get the, you know, making the, the latches for the door and latches for the hood and, and assembling the brakes and stuff like that, the cotter pin for the wheel. So there's that, and then we also picked up the uh, Jaguar XJR9 uh, grade up parts. So obviously this is for the uh, Jaguar. Uh, again, what am I use out of this? The the, the mesh more than likely, uh, the brake faces. Uh, there appears to be some. Uh, I'm not sure, these are the wing mounts. Or what's going on with that? Uh, some bulkhead stuff here. So you know I have to go through the instructions like a little little Jaguar. Uh, Valve cover, valve head covers, and things like that. And again, you get like a little bit of a thing back here as far as what it is. I'm showing you what mesh to put in here if you're building a Le Mans car or a uh, Daytona prototype, and you know various things. So it should be interesting. I'm uh, I'm lo I'm looking forward to uh, getting those projects started at some point. Um, we picked up. Let's see, there's two of them. I have, these things are all, like I said, out of whack now. Uh, picked up three sets of this because we have three of these uh, kits, and these are the photo or the photo watch. Wow, I'm just all over the place. The detail upsets for the BMW M6 GT3 Hobby new new kit. Um, this big panel piece right here goes on the inside of the roof, which is a nice touch. You don't see that done too often. Uh, the main reason, and you're like, oh, well, there's already a photo watch set or, that has uh, carbon fiber in it. Why would you buy another one? Uh, mainly because this includes all of the interior pieces. This is actually two, maybe you'll see here, there's two two sheets here. This right here is the edge of a sheet, and then there's a whole another full sheet behind it. It's two-sided two sided instructions, which lets you know there's a lot of photo etch, or a lot of, ah, oh, wow, a lot of carbon fiber in here. Uh, but here's sort of the one side of it here, um, you know, having you basically put all of the detail into the fog light recesses if you're going to do a, a uh, endurance car. 
also has uh, the the correct carbon fiber for the fog light covers. If you're not doing an endurance car, if you're doing a sprint car, um, the inside uh, of the air intake carbon fiber, the scuttle panel carbon fiber, which is a really a nice touch. Um, all of your your rear strake here and your front lip and the inside air intakes get all their carbon fiber and then the entire this side of it basically is all the interior pieces uh, as far as the instructions go. So there's that. Continuing on the carbon fiber dance, here's the carbon fiber for the Sauber C9. We got two sets of this because I want to get the both Tommy kits. I've tracked down the other one. And uh, it was just easier to order all the carbon fiber at once, so you don't have to worry about trying to find another set. I like this carbon fiber because it's not all just black. There is some other, you know, hues. It's kind of hard to tell here, but some of this stuff down here is more brown than it is uh, black. I hope that tonal variation is showing up, uh, you know, from the reflection. This, obviously, is very easy to see. It's different colors, but this, uh, you know, even the, the kit is full detail. There's not a lot of you know, carbon fiber within the engine compartment itself. Most of it is confined to the top and the bottom portions of the chassis, as well as the interior work. Um, so that'll be fun. It's a nice carbon fiber detail, not quite as intense as the Z, as the M6 or the uh, uh, AMG. And then you have this set here, which is the XJR9 Le Mans uh, decals. This pretty much down here is all interior pieces. A lot of this right here is chassis pieces. Um, but even with that, there's still only a one-sided instruction sheet. So basically, you know, you're built, a lot of this stuff goes on the interior, uh, and then some bulkhead, well, rear bulkhead, this would obviously be, that's the interior, this is the back, the engine would be right here. And then, uh, you know, your bottom and top of your chassis again. So, again, some nice detail without going completely, totally nuts. Uh, this decal sheet here is the, uh, Taboo Graphics. Uh, 1984 Safari Rally decals. You may recall I was like, hey, you know, the Safari kit that came out of BMAX doesn't have any of the Marlboro liveries, and the rally, these placards are wrong, and then the things they try to replace them with are the wrong color. If somebody needs to make a, a, a sheet of this. Little that I remembered last year before that the kit was even announced from BMAX, uh, Taboo did this decal sheet for the other kit, the original 240 RS, the one that has the Nissan factory uh livery on it which technically you know you wouldn't be able to build this car from that kit because there's some differences with it but uh this decal sheet already existed just forgot it forgot about it what you need off of this decal sheet are all of the marlboro stuff right so the headliner this the all of the i know patrick hates these words flipped upside down because who are you fooling but at least they're not split up on the actual sheets themselves you need the number of placards the rally plate the rally placards the the windshield header the driver names also have a marlboro uh championship thing you know team thing on them uh a lot of the other rest of these associate sponsorships all these things like that are already in the kit itself uh if you happen to be shopping for this set and they show you the back here the marlboro stuff is not on the back uh thing it's shadow boxed like, uh, i assume you can see that where you need to put the marlboro logo but the marlboro stuff is not shown uh just to avoid again the licensing and the tobacco sales issues that are involved with that so it does exist they you know it really is marlboro livery and uh, logos in there, so uh, purchase with confidence. I also picked these two the two sheets up uh, mainly because I picked up the uh, Calibra kits that they go to. Uh, first up is the Jost, Jost Racing version. Um, this, of course, is the white and yellow one. You do have to paint the middle chrome yellow uh, insert here. This is a decal on the Tamiya kit, but uh, in this kit they give you the swooshes, but not this big piece in the middle. Which is normal Shunko livery. Shunko decals are painting a lot of two tones that you wouldn't have to with the kit decals, but the reason you're buying these is because the kit, the kit decals stink on ice. So uh, there's that. Um, you know, it's, this is just a, this is a fresh reprint. They just ran these decals off last month. They've been out of production for a little while. So if you need a set of these, like I did, uh, grab them while you can. Um, I don't know how fast they'll really sell out per se, but the Shunko decals are, are limited batches. They do runs of about three to five hundred decals worldwide, so that's not a lot of them when it comes down to it. And uh, you know, I, I've been waiting for this decal sheet, sheet to be reissued for almost two years now because I needed the replacement. And then I recently got a, a Cliff Calibra um, 
This was also a Team Jost car from, I believe, the next year, because this is 94 and this is 95. And uh, I got it for next to nothing because the decals are shot. So I picked the replacement, the, the Cliff Calibra uh, livery up. It's a very simple car. It's a lot of silver on a black car. So there was that. And then one last thing <clears throat> is this. This is the Hobby Design 2010 24 Hours of Nürburgring uh, Porsche Hybrid, or the Porsche, are they calling it, the uh, Intelligent Performance Car. Um, I have looked at this set of decals a number of times because I, first of all, I'm not a terribly large Porsche fan in the first place, but I just sort of skipped a lot of the Porsche liveries over the years because most of them are for uh, either the 24 Hours of Le Mans or they're for IMSA, and that's fine if you build those two series, but I don't. I build GT3 cars for the most part in terms of my sports car, my customer customer racing. Uh, so this is one that I've, I've, I've seen a couple of different times, and you can build uh, the 24 Hours of Le Mans uh, 911 car. But I wanted, uh, I was like, you know what? It's this was on sale again. It was on the spring sale thing. It was like seven dollars for the set of decals, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and grab it because uh, you know most of this livery is all here. You're just you paint the car sort of a McLaren orange-ish color, or maybe a uh, Jaeger orange is more accurate. But you paint it all orange, and then all the, all the white and gray and stuff is decal. So you know it's and it's broken up pretty well in terms of getting it to go around the compound compound curves of the GT3 R Fujimi kit. So uh, you know, hey, it was worth seven dollars. <laughs> so that would be that in terms of those uh, decals and photo sets. Set those aside. I'm going to take a drink of something because my voice is scratchy this morning. And then we'll just very quickly plow through the model kits. Uh, first up, we have the retool. I'm going to adjust the camera while I do this. Uh, the retool of the Hasegawa 2002. This makes the 69 Monte Carlo Rally winner. Or not Rally winner. I guess car finished seventh, actually. But the 1969 Monte Carlo Rally uh, edition. Uh, in this kit, <laughs> you get the uh, new wheels, obviously the livery decals, uh, these big fog lights in the front. There's also a very large driving light in the back. I'm not sure if it's a reverse light or a brake light, technically. I haven't looked at the instructions to see what color you paint it. Uh, skid plate, uh, a racing seat. Passenger gets a regular 2002 seat. Sorry, pal, you're sliding all over. Uh, you have, of course, the roll caging in here, mud flaps for the back. Uh, there's a couple of other little bits and pieces here and there. Uh, what is very interesting about this is this is a TI. And the, the scripting in here does include the TI scripting. Uh, the original kit, the first one of these 2002s that came out, you remember, is a like a 75 TII or 73 TII. <coughs> I'm going to go off on a limb here and say they're not going to make another civilian version of this model. So if you wanted to skip the rally build to build a very, very early 2002, one of the TIs, uh, you can do that because within the confines of this model kit, uh, are all of the you know the chrome trim for the regular car, uh, as well as if I can find them in here, you have the the regular factory hubcaps, and then for the TI for the TI, this is like the original old hubcaps, right? <laughs> because here's your rally wheels over here, some steely. And, you know, nothing else. you got a set of steelies if you don't you want to use them. And then underneath all of this, if I can get it to move out of the way, are the turbo wheels from the 2002 Turbo. So uh, very much a everything is in here sort of a proposition. Um, there are, as you can see, maybe you can see, there's one steering wheel here. There's another steering wheel back in here. And then there's yet another steering wheel right here. Uh, you have several different brakes sets, uh, several different suspension sets. So you can build a factory, you know, just a regular civilian ver version of this car. I'll see if I can pull the some other things out here. Here's your uh, livery set, as it were. Maybe. Yes? No? Maybe so. There it goes. So you can see you have all of the regular factory gauges in there as well, as well as all of the factory 
Uh, I know some people don't really care for this bare metal foil on the decal sheet thing, but all of the window surrounds and everything that would be there normally, all of the BMW logos, uh, including ones for, you know, wheels for uh, hubcaps that you're not using, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously the livery isn't much to look at, just some casserole things and you're, you know, painting the color two-tone. Uh, what I wanted to show you, though, if I can find it, is, yeah, this, your map. Your map of the kit. Look at all these parts that are X'd off. All the stuff is in shaded in gray you don't use on this model. So, you know, you're not using this set of wheels, which is the turbo wheels. You're not using this hub, this hubcap set. Um, you're not using this steering wheel. You're not using that steering wheel, this center console. Uh, you know, like I said, all, everything you need in here to make a civilian car is in here. Uh, you're very clearly being told not to use any of it. Um, so, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm 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 jazzed. I'm cool with that. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're never going to be offered a civilian version of this car, and uh, that's you know in the TI sense. Um, so if you wanted to do a very very early version of the car, you have that ability. And I'm trying to find if I can, and without taking it out of the package to show you, you have these metal transfers also for the TI specific. TI uh, logos. So, um, yeah, everything's there you need to make the civilian car. I'm almost half tempted to not build this as a rally car, to just build this as a civilian uh, TI, to be perfectly honest with you, having all the parts to do it. Um, well, we'll see what that ends up being. I may save it and or, or may not do that, may buy another one and do this in a different livery. I'm not, you know, the, the whole, I'm not attached to that rally car in any way, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So here's the uh, other Hasegawa kit we got in this shipment, and this, of course, is the uh, Ermshire Turbo version of the Isuzu Gemini with these great monoblock wheels. Um, yeah, not a lot to say here, curbside. You got, this is not a brand, brand new kit. It's been out for a couple of months. Uh, I'm pretty sure Feeden's Garage uh, did a pile of box on that if you want to see the contents. This is the new Aoshima reissue of the uh, Savannah RX-7 that you can build uh, both as a 1985 model or a 1989 model, and it does include the left-hand drive parts. So uh, if you have the Tamiya version of this kit, which is, if I can get this off here without destroying everything that's stacked around, is this, right, the Savannah GT Limited, um, if we can... I don't know how we can do this, actually. <laughs> this this may work. You can see the differences in the front end. Um, you obviously, you, you don't paint the black trim on the late spec. Uh, there is a slightly different uh, aspect to the turn signals. Uh, the fog lights, air, you know, engraving is different. Uh, obviously, the wheels are, you know, this set here. These are brand new wheels. They were tooled up specifically for this kit. So if you have one of these in the past, you couldn't build it factory stock because it did not have the factory stock uh, wheel covers. Uh, you can, by the way, if you didn't, if you if you've never seen one of these, uh, you, this does have left hand drive steering as well. So you can build two, uh, if not U.S. spec, at least uh, export spec cars. So there is no engine in here. Tommy kit is full detail, so know that going in. But uh, you know. For the Mazda collector, if you will, uh, it's pretty cool. And then these don't want to fit anymore, so we'll just take this out and set it right side up while I stick this back in the box. This is the BMAX uh, Toyota Corona Japanese Touring Car Championship. This vehicle here won the the uh, Touring Car Championship that year. Uh, Sakya-san in his winning livery here. Uh, and then you also have uh, a Gori Suzuki uh, livery on the side here to build the other team car. Um, this These decals are a bunch of red, as it, turn, as, well, as it turns out. I knew that. You may not have. But basically, you paint the car white. And then uh, this there's two sets of decals in here, basically. Um, this set here, which you know has a lot of your associate sponsorships and, you know, the, we, the Oz wheel logos and things like that, and the window trim, and then this whole uh, sheet down here is all of the uh, red that goes on the body. You paint the car white, and the decals do everything else. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I, I'd be very tempted to paint the roof white myself, you know, 
and not have to deal with the decals. Here's the or two of them. Yeah, there are, there's two of them because of the many, many differences between the actual sponsorships between the two. We do this so they're side by side. But yeah, so there's your two different vehicles. And like I said, all of this red is decals, including the roof. Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how well all that'll fit. But uh, yeah, you get the the gist. Again, the Gori's car and then uh, Seki Son's car here with the championship. So. Um, you know, the decals are, are normal B Max affairs where it tells you how to make the uh, photo etch pieces that come in here. Like this like piece fold in half makes a seat. Uh, Seat mount, the tank straps for the for the uh, fire extinguisher, and then the big box. Where's the big box at? Because that's the one thing that a lot of people are like, hey, it's just a great big box in this photo etch. Why do we need this photo etch? Uh, let's see here. Where is it? Where is it? Obviously showing you how to plumb the seat belt. I'm not seeing it now. But there's your photo etch face for the radiator, which sits behind the grill, so it's going to be pretty prominent and see-through. Um, I really am just not seeing what I want to see here. I know what I'm looking for, but I'm not seeing it. <laughs> ah, here it is. See, this piece here, which is the gas tank, basically, is a kit piece. And then uh, you basically fold the photo etch over top of it and wrap it like a Christmas present. And this is, you know, uh, semi-gloss black. So the, the argument is, do you need to pay for the photo etch set to get a piece of metal that goes over the piece of metal? Mm, I don't know. So that's up to you. <laughs> as far as whether or not that would uh, be something that is worth it to you in consideration. Uh, B-Max, you know, still taking the high road compared to for uh, the Hobby Nunu M6 where... The Hobby Nunu M6, you had to buy several pieces. You, you, in order to get several pieces that were integral to the kit, as far as I was concerned, like the dive plane and the tow hooks and the interior and netting and things like that, you had to buy the detail upset. All of the, the photo etch pieces that are in here that are replicated by kit pieces for the most part. So it's not as, uh, you know, dire, if you will. And then last, at least in this box, is the version 2 uh, Liberty Walk R35. Aside from obviously different livery decals for the different for the second car, uh, be really cool if they give you camo <laughs> patterns for the seats. But uh, there's a different set of wheels in here, and then you have the GT3 style rear spoiler. That is the only difference uh, 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 that is in here compared to the version one kit, the one that was powder blue on the box itself. Um, so right on top, here are your livery decals or your livery decals. Well, they're, technically they're livery. Uh, you can get the window mask out of the way. So there's your decals as far as the graphics go. There we go. There, now it's in focus. So gives you an idea. A, the, the seats are camo. It would be kind of cool if there were camo decals for the seats, but that's probably not a feasible thing in terms of the, uh, the, the way the kit is designed. Also, uh, to remember with these uh, Liberty Walk kits, there are a left-hand drive dashboard in uh, in interior bucket in here. So uh, you get an, you know, every one of these you buy that you don't build a, in domestic spec, being a U.S. spec type of thing. You get a free set or a free interior with it. So here's your new uh, rim set, barrels, and the actual wheel faces themselves. They were in focus the first time, but anyway. So I said that's that's really the only new thing about it. Do know going in these are uh, kind of what they call an advanced builder kit in the sense that uh, the you do have to cut the body to fit the over fenders, right? So know that going in that the over fenders do not fit on here without cutting the body, or they may actually fit on the body without cutting the body, but then you won't be able to mount the wheels and the tires because the wheels and the tires are too big for the wheel openings without cutting the without you know arching the uh, wheel wells. So. Depending on how you look at it, you could get the... I know somebody else was, was like, oh, I can make this fit. Yeah, you can. The overfenders probably will fit without cutting the body, but when you put the, the whole kit together, your wheels are not going to clear your body, and then you have to take your car apart and repaint it and all that fun stuff. So uh, do it up front, and you don't have those issues. So anyway, guys, that wraps up this video. Uh, it's a long one from the recorded length here, so apologize for that, and uh, we'll see you guys on the other side.